Precipitation is anything that falls from a cloud back down to the surface of the earth, and it can be as mild as a bit of light drizzle or as intense as large, heavy hailstones. How do we know when to call it rain or drizzle though? And what is the difference between a light shower and a moderate shower? Let's find out. Hi, I'm Grant and welcome to the seventh class in the meteorology series where we're going to be taking a quick look at the various types of precipitation that fall from the clouds back down to the surface of the earth. Precipitation is formed when rising air cools down to below the dew point and the air becomes fully saturated and clouds are formed. It's basically suspended precipitation at this point. The suspended water droplets or ice crystals will then fall down back to earth as precipitation if they grow large enough and heavy enough for gravity to pull them down at a stronger rate than the air is rising up. This means that the more the air is rising, the larger these water molecules, uh, these water droplets, sorry, will have to become to overcome this rising force for the gravity to pull them down. Water droplets or ice crystals will grow larger by basically colliding into each other and combining in size. Water droplets falling as precipitation fall into two camps based on the size of the droplets. If they are small and have a diameter of less than 0.5 millimetres, then this type of precipitation is known as drizzle. If it is larger than this, we call it rain, which has an upper limit of around 5 millimetres. Any larger than this, and they tend to break apart into smaller droplets anyway. Generally speaking, the more intense the upward motion of the air, the more updrafts, the more rising air that we have, the bigger the droplets need to grow in order to be pulled down to the earth by the gravity and overcome that rising air. So you could say that rain generally comes from cumuliform clouds, the clouds associated with unstable conditions and more rising air. And then stratiform, stable sort of clouds, with a lot less rising air are more likely to produce drizzle. It's important to note that we also have precipitation called freezing drizzle and freezing rain, which is when the drizzle or rain droplets are super cooled to below zero degrees Celsius, but still in liquid form. This happens because normally ice crystals form around impurities in the air, like dust particles um, or other impurities. If the air is very pure, if it has very few impurities, then the supercooled droplets can form. And then when these droplets come into contact with an impurity, such as an aircraft, then they will form into ice crystals. And we need to think about anti-icing the aircraft, basically. When the temperature in the cloud is cold enough to form ice, then the precipitation will fall from the cloud as ice, but it may melt as it heats up and descends down back to earth. There are a few types of ice precipitation, such as snow. Snow comes in a few forms. You can think of the typical snowflakes as being a few centimetres in size. There's actually so much variance with snowflakes um, in terms of their size. They can be you know, huge or tiny or a range of things in between. But generally, a few centimetres seems about accurate. Then you have snow grains, which are very small particles about one millimeter or less in diameter. And then you would have snow pellets, which are like round balls, um, around five millimeters in size. And there's no rule in terms of if this is gonna come from stratiform clouds or cumuliform clouds, because there's gonna be different levels of rising air, um, and it just has to be cold, essentially, for snow to form. You also have sleet, which is a combination of rain and snow, or it can be snow that has fallen down and partially melted on the way down, or some of the parts have melted on the way down. So you get a combination of both water and ice. Again, this has no strict rule on if this is gonna come from cumuliform or stratiform clouds. It's gonna be different levels of rising air and what will happen is just the particle size will tend to be different. If you've got more stable conditions, it'll be smaller particles, more unstable conditions, it's gonna be larger particles. You also have hail, which forms when an ice pellet, such as this, rises and falls within a cloud that has a lot of rising air, such as a big cumulonimbus cloud. As the ice grows, it falls and collides with more supercooled water droplets or ice particles on the way down through the cloud. Then the rising air sends it back up to the top and it falls down again 
and it gathers these layers and layers and layers of ice. Uh, so this requires a lot of rising air. This is very high levels of rising air, very unstable conditions, very cumuliform clouds, you will get hail in. And hail can grow huge. There's loads of photos on, online of massive um, hail drops that are the size of tennis balls and you know even larger than that. So hail, pretty serious precipitation if it can get, because it can get so large basically. Intensity of precipitation is measured in terms of slight, moderate and heavy and it's the amount of precipitation that falls in an hour. So you can think of rain and slight as being less than 0.5 millimeters. This is rain or drizzle, just water based basically. Moderate would be, be between 0.5 and 4 millimeters per hour and heavy would be anything more than 4 millimeters per hour. And then when you move on to the ice and snow based precipitation you basically convert these into centimetres. So slight snow showers or slight snow would be 0.5 centimetres per hour. Moderate would be 0.5 centimetres to 4 centimetres per hour and heavy would be anything more than 4 centimetres per hour. The duration of the precipitation is described in terms of continuous which means it lasts more than 60 minutes. Intermittent, which would mean in a 60 minute period, there's no real clear breaks, but it's not continuous the whole time. Or shower, which is just on off in blocks of time uh, with clear gaps of when there's no precipitation and clear gaps where there is precipitation. You can think of continuous and intermittent as associated more with stratiform clouds and showers on off sort of precipitation as more um, associated with cumuliform base clouds like cumulonimbus or cumulus clouds in general. To summarise then, a nice quick class today, short and sharp. You've got different types of precipitation. Drizzle is water that is less than 0.5 millimetres in diameter. Rain is water that is less than 5 millimetres in diameter. You've got snow in a few forms. You get the flakes, the grains and the pellets. Flakes can be a few centimetres in size. The grains would be about one millimeter or less and pellets are around five millimeters. You get sleet, which can be various shapes and sizes. It's a combination of both water and uh, ice-based precipitation. So it could be drizzle and uh, ice grains, for example, or ice pellets. Um, and it can also be caused by um, ice-based particles falling down, warming up, and some of them melting on the way down. You also get hail, which again can be various sizes, tiny little particles all the way up to big uh, tennis ball size things that you get in uh, some places with extreme weather. And this happens when an ice pellet will fall and rise within a cloud, uh, colliding with more and more supercooled water droplets or ice particles on the way down. And it gets sent back up to the top, repeats the process over and over again, gaining layers and layers of ice and growing in size. And a rule of thumb is the bigger the droplets, the more rising air you have. So think about hail getting all the way up to that tennis ball size, that's gonna be a huge droplet. It's not really a droplet because I suppose a droplet's just of water, but that has a really high amount of rising air. And then drizzle, not that much rising air, very small droplets. In terms of intensity, it's all per hour. So you get slight, which is 0.5 millimeters per hour moderate 0.5 to 4 millimetres per hour and heavy is more than 4 millimetres per hour. That would be in terms of the water-based ones, rain and drizzle, and then for the snow and ice-based ones you just use centimetres. So slight snow or moderate snow would be 0.5 centimetres to 4 centimetres. And then the duration, if it's anything more than 60 minutes or 60 minutes or more, you would call it continuous precipitation. If it's intermittent, it's Kind of a weird one because it's not continuous but it's also not as defined as showers so it's not all the time but there's no large breaks in the precipitation and showers are defined on off blocks of uh, precipitation so if you had a a moderate rain shower you would say that there's five millimeter sized droplets there is 0.5 to 4 millimetres depth of them after an hour and it was on off throughout that whole hour. There was, wasn't a single period where it was raining the whole hour. It was on off on off.